Well, everybody, Merry Christmas. I hope everybody is having a good time, enjoying the holiday cheers, being with your families, having a nice Christmas dinner, the whole thing. Me, personally, I did all that. But, however, I decided, you know what, I'm going to take this into a nice slow pace for all of you. As you know, I did not release no video on Christmas Eve. But, however... I am releasing it now because by the time this video is out, it should be on the 26th of December. So today we're just going to be doing two reviews. The first one is from MLW with Holiday Rush featuring several good matches. The tag team titles are on the line. Of course, we have Fatu versus Hammerstone Part 3. Everything is going to be awesome in this particular show. And then, of course, we move on with Stardom's New Blood 12. We do have the New Blood Tag Team titles on the line. Wingori, or members from Stars, Hanan and Saeeda, defend them against a very interesting duel between Lady C and Ami Sodi. So we're going to see if they can defend it. Plus, there are also some new girls that, in fact, making their debut, taking on some of the top talent in stardom. So we'll see how they'll do as well. And then, of course, we have some news updates to tell what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling, such as de developments with the promotion, such as what uh, matches have been booked from what uh, events. And we also have this new thing we're going to call right now, at the moment, the Mustafa Ali report. See where he's going to be actually going in 2024. And, of course, we have some other developments going on. Of course, we have... Jericho apparently starting a bit of a drama with CM Punk's attorney over some of the NDAs, as you know, has been announced, and several other things. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay, right here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we do a lot of reviews from various different promotions, not only here in the States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Canada. Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world of pro wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos where we talk about certain topics, such as the wrestlers themselves, the promotions, factions, storylines, whatever we want to get our hands on. We also do more news updates. If I'm unable to put it on this episode, I can put it on a separate video by itself. And we also do other cool stuff as well. So if you guys like what you see, please subscribe to us on this channel. So click on that subscribe button. You'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool stuff on this channel. Also, if you like this episode, please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment down in the description down below. Now, let's begin with Hall o with MLW Holiday Rush. This was recently earlier in the month on the 7th of December. Uh, we start out with a bit of a six-way scramble match. We have uh, Akira versus Love Dog versus Alec Price versus Jay Bujin versus Nolo Kitano versus Brett Ryan Goslin. Now, there's a lot of factors in this type of match, you can guess. Now, when it comes to scramble matches, anything could happen. However, much of this, there's been a bit of a how do I say Love Dog has been targeting has been fighting against Brett uh Brett Ryan Goslin due to the fact of the situation with those two with Becca. As you know, Love Dog has a thing for Becca. Becca's been rejecting him, and Brett's saying that she is um that he is her boyfriend. So the whole thing. But however, um I have to say there uh, you would have expected certain wrestlers that would have won. I mean, there's Alec Price as one of those wrestlers that Many of us who have seen in other promotions 
what a great talent. But however, in the end, it was, of course, Akira with the death penalty that put away Alec Price. And one, two, three, it was over. Now, as you all know, Akira has uh, has some issues going around, especially when RSP. Now, keep in mind, Akira was a member of the calling until he started saying that Raven, ever since he started this thing, he's just disappeared. And then RSP has somehow taken control, manipulated his way through to do that, which, of course, he has been known to do that. However, um, of course, this became a brutal beatdown by uh, by the Colin to attack Arkira. So he basically, he's on his own. But he was able to hold on until the security stopped him from hurting RSP. But sooner or later, he will get his chance on him at a King's Coliseum in January 6th. Now... As you know, there was a bit of an interesting match that was booked. Selena De Laurenta taking on Ichiban. Now, Ichiban has been demanding a shot of the MLW World Middleweight Championship. Apparently, it's been ignored. However, something has been developing. In the recent weeks, Selena De Laurenta has been agitated by some things that have been coming her way. This time, a bag showed up and she went totally ballistic. Apparently, nobody knows what is going on. But... I can take a few guesses why. <coughs> now, our next match, we have a three-way. We have Taya, T uh, Tiara James versus Notorious Mimi versus Zeta. Now, as you know, Zeta is the newest member of the World Titan Federation, signed with that fat piece of garbage, Mr. St. Laurent. However, of course, St. Laurent was going to ensure that everything goes their way, even though he... He actually cost Tiara James the match by pulling his foot, her foot away, away while she was uh, pinning um, Zeta. But Zeta was the one who picked up the win by applying a move that we're all familiarized by one particular person. Or you guys know who that is. Matt Cardona, the unprettier. So this is one of those matches, of course, where St. Laurent, that fat lard, in fact, is proud of. But sooner or later, they're going to be overthrown. Now, our next match, as we continue on with more of the whole uh, World Time Federation, try to take control of MLW. Well, one of their members, Josh Bishop, is <coughs> has a date with Destiny against Matthew Justice. So, this match, as you know, became a brutal match. But, however, of course, f that fat lard, um, Mr. St. Laurent, was going to get involved by distracting him. But it was, of course, Bishop who tossed... Justice threw a table and then pin him. But however, Justice refuses to stay down and continues to attack him. It went on until later on in the entirety of the show, they caught on with both Bishop and Justice in the roof. And then he later put Bishop in, in a table. Then Matthew Justice put him right through the table with an elbow, sending a clear message that he refuses to die. So that's why, of course, Matthew Justice is known as the one-man militia. So I think World Time Federation has underestimated. And so is that fat lard of Mr. St. Laurent. Now, as you know, Tony Deppin, that biggest a-hole on the planet, has reemerged. It started a little interesting match with Kevin Blackwood. Now, keep in mind, whenever since he recruited TJ Crawford, apparently Blackwood did not know what was going on until... Crawford turned his back on him, signing with him, and then Tony Depp in being suspended and all this other stuff. However, of course, the Kevin was going to get his revenge against him. But, of course, his dick wad of a buddies, known as Griffin McCoy and TJ Crawford, were going to get involved. And somehow, but however, it didn't do any good for um, for Blackwood one way or the other because, um, of course, Tony Depp in pinned him and then, of course, in that. Now, here's the interesting part. I know some of you may hate this guy. Some of you like, love him, like him. However you feel, it was announced that Matt Riddle joins MLW. Now, I did mention on a <coughs> on a, a, a previous episode on the news updates, he will be facing against Jacob Fatu for the first time ever at the Kings of Coliseum on January 6th. So, mark your calendars, boys and girls. Now, we do have a number one contendership 
for the MLW World Tag Team Titles. First team we have, of course, is <coughs> the main event, Midas Black and Jay Lyons, versus, of course, the Dickwads, Griffin McCoy and TJ Crawford, and, of course, the newly sensation team that has now been making ways in MLW, um, Marcus Mathers and Dylan McKay, Wasted Youth. I have to say this is one of the most impressive number one contendership matches because you can tell that these teams are determined to be the ones, hopefully to be the next challengers. But in the end, it was, of course, um, the Wasted Youth who picked up the win when um, Marcus Matters applies a shooting star press onto... Uh, who was it? He got it? Oh, yeah, on Midas Black, and it was over right there. So they will be facing against the winners. Between Second Gear Crew or, um, what's their name? Oh, yeah. Boom IA Fight Club. Now, we do see the very interesting match. Uh, Selena De La Renta versus Ichiban. I can tell you this match it went exactly what Selena De La Renta wanted. She got disqualified. Ichiban won the match. Spray paint his face. And then uh, it was a four-on-one beatdown. And, of course, they removed Ichiban mask. Mascara de Rao, who was not going to tolerate, showed up and to give a helping hand. But sooner or later, Ichiban will get his match against Rocky for the MLW World Middleweight, uh, Middleweight Championship. Now, our next match is, of course, the MLW World Tag Team titles. The Boom I Eight Fight Club take on the Second Gear Crew, Matters, and Good uh, Brother 3. Now, you probably would have thought this match was going to be good, but I knew that at some point... Something was going to go, not wrong, but more like something is going to sidetrack. As you know, there was, of course, I don't know where Richard Holiday shows up. Try to get in the face of Alex Kane because, as you know, uh, Richard Holiday has made a play for that belt once before, but came up short. And then the match resulted in a, a disqualification for second gear of crew to uh, retain the belt, but of course those piece of garbage is World Time Federation showed up, started to send a direct message saying that this is their house, but it's an all-out war now against anybody that stands in the way. Now in the back area of the entire venue, Delmi Exo this w confronted Janai Kai and all this because, as you know, Janai Kai took satisfaction in taking her belt away. So when security showed up and tried to separate them, all of a sudden, a very shocking development. We haven't seen these guys in a while. But the Azteca henchmen showed up. And gave a letter to Delmi X. So nobody knows what's going on. Now let me pause here for a little bit. Before we get to our main event. In recent times we have seen. Silda Renta has been agitated. So however she was. As you all know. Silda Renta disappeared with the hen When. She was taken away by Caesar Duran and, of course, the henchmen. So, basically, something is happening. The last time we saw Caesar, he was taken by his henchmen. We don't know what or why. But, something big is about to happen. Now, as you know, uh, World Time Federation, Promotion Duran, are trying to take control of MLW. But the obvious question is, is there going to be another third party involved in this? Well, we'll see about that when we get there. Now, our main event is part three of this trilogy between these two guys, Alex Hammerstone and Jacob Fatu. These guys have challenged each other before. Now, keep in mind, it was Hammerstone who defeated Fatu for the MLW title a couple years ago. But now it's like, okay, this is the final battle between them. And I thought this match was insane. You probably wouldn't expect it. So basically... I was impressed. However, it was Jacob Fatu who picked up the win when he applied the moonsault. It was over. But as we speak, this in fact will be the last time we see Hammerstone, I believe. So basically, he put out a very heartwarming uh, promo. And then, of course, Court Bauer gave him a hug and all this. So basically, this could be the end of him being an MLW. But we'll see what the future lies for Hammerstone. So I think that's uh, pretty much it. What we have for MLW, I believe it's time for New Blood 12.
Okay, Stardom's New Blood 12. Now, if you guys never heard of this, let me explain this to you. This is where they introduce newer talent. Not only from the Stardom coming out of the dojo, but also from other places. From other promotions such as uh, Just Tap Out, uh, possibly Gambara Yoshi, um, Marvelous, Sandai's, wherever they want to. So, we have some interesting developments that took place. But we do have debuts from brand new uh, Yoshi wrestlers coming out of the Stardom Dojo system. Now, our first match, we have Saya Kamitani taking on a rookie named Sayaka Kurara. Hopefully, I pronounced the last name right. If not, then... Yeah. So, anyway, I have to say it was a, an okay match. I mean, not much of a big deal because, A, we know that this girl, Sayaka, Sayaka will grow up eventually. She will gain a little bit of experience on that and no she is not affiliated with any other faction within stardom that's how it starts out they have to gain uh experience but sooner or later they have to make a choice where they fit in and primarily i have to say she <coughs> uh she did okay she did have a little bit of fire but it was uh sai kamitani with the star crusher that put her away giving her the win now, the next one, I was really impressed with this one. We have Sudi taking on, um, what's her name? Runa Yagami. I have to say, Yagami really impressed me the most. The reason is she has that bit of a fight, uh, fighting spirit type way, but not to mention the kicks. If you guys ever seen the strike kicks that that we seen with Momo or Mina Shirakawa. She did that. She was doing with Sayuri. I, you probably would not imagine. And I would honestly would say, even though she is not affiliated, I would say she would fit perfectly <coughs> with um, God's Eye because she does have that type of mentality. But unfortunately, even though, like I said before, she does not have the, the, the years of experience, but she did put up a hell of a fight against Sudi. She ended up losing by a submission. I forgot the name of the move for, that Sudi uses, but really, really impressed me. Now, our next match, we have Hina taking on Mei Sita, but no, the high-speed title is not on the line, in case anybody asks. But if Hina does pin Mei Sita, then there is the possibility she could challenge her for the belt. Now, of course, uh, we hardly see Hina that much. Uh, you probably ask yourselves, how come we haven't seen her that much? Well, you should know she not only wrestles, but she also goes to school at the same time. So, yes, that sort of thing. But, however, um, May Sita, you know, with her high speed, has always been one of her uh, weapons that she uses throughout the entirety of her career, was able to, to put away Hina with the rolling star, and just like that, she won. Next match, we have Oedo Tai, consisting of Ruka and our current future of stardom champion, Rina, taking on Chanyota and Mai Sakurai. Now, these two, Sakurai and Chanyota, have teamed up on various occasions in previous New Blood shows before. Of course, they started out as, uh, as opponents, then team up. But <coughs> recently, of course, Chanyota was uh, very pissed off. That her name was not mentioned in in this particular show as an advertisement. But Stardom was able to take care of that and fix it. So there's that. But however, in the end of this match, of course, it was um, my Sakurai with the my pan roll to put away Ruka. One, two, three. It's not going to happen. So during the um, during the post-match comments, of course, uh, my Sakurai said that there's something that's missing for those two. So... I have a feeling what that is. But however, Rina and Ruka said this about them saying that these old ladies don't have a future. So basically, they feel like they're insulted that they are in their in that they're older. They even though here's the thing. Chanyota only's been wrestling for almost 2 years. But she's like in her late 20s. So basically, for Rina, she's an insult to the future wrestlers. So yeah. Now, our next match, we have another tag team. We have 
Yuzuki and Hanako taking on Miyu Amasaki and of course the Diana World Champion Aruka Omasaki. So basically it was a pretty interesting match. Now I know me Amasaki has uh, been in Diana before uh, wrestling. I'm sure that the <coughs> there's that. But however this match was pretty good. But it was Amasaki that put away Yuzuki with the Tenzai giving her the win for this match. Now our next <coughs> <coughs> Our main event is, of course, New Blood, the New Blood Tag Team titles. Lady C and Ami Suri taking on Wingori. Excuse me. Uh, Saya Ida and Hanan. I have to say, Ida and, uh, and, and Hanan have always shown they were a really good stable team together since they're both members of STARS, which is obvious. But. You wouldn't expect a whole lot, but it was in fact Hanan, as you know, she does have the most consecutive defenses as the future champion, put up a hell of a fight and shows why she is is the future ace of stardom. So she did put Lacey away with the Hanan special. One, two, three, it was over right from there. Now, as the promo was going on, apparently, my Sakurai and Chayota showed up, issuing a challenge for the tag titles. However, Hanan said this, but even though it was translated, you're too late. Come sooner. Now, if those who are confused don't understand what that meant, let me explain. You have, If you have started out very young in the, in, in the Stojo system, like let's say 15 years old, basically by the time you're under, 20, uh, under 21, you'll be no longer in that experience. Hanan is like that. She started out with her sisters in the dojo system. Um, Chanyota and Mai Sakurai, on the other hand, they started out a little later. So basically, they only have the three-year experience. However, Mai Sakurai's three-year experience has ended already a few months back. So basically, she does not qualify. But one thing I know for a fact that if Rina sees this, she probably would... Well, even though she and her sister are on different units, she probably would think that, you know, Ma Sakurai was insulting the future champ, the future status of what the rookies are all about. So that's always been the case. So I'm sure there's going to be that match. But we have seen recently Ami, um, what's her name? Miyu Amasaki team up with Azumi for these belts and they came up short. So I'm sure we will have that match sooner or later on the next New Blood show, uh, where I think it's going to take place maybe in two or three months, somewhere around there. So we'll see when they advertise that. So if they do, I'll let you guys know. I think that's pretty much it with all the reviews. Let's do our last and final thing, news updates. <laughs> Okay, so welcome to our news update. So this is what we have so far. Now, for um, updates in the promotions, uh, first we have GCW with two things. Uh, the Aftermath show that takes place on the 30th of December. As you know, there's a match called the Do or Die Rumble. Four names have been announced added into this Rumble. We have Masha Slamovich, Gringo Loco, Sawyer Rack, and Jordan Cruz. So they are all now participated in a do or die rumble match. And then of course on the 26th of January for the Look at Me show in Tampa, they announced the debut of Zilla Fatu. If you guys don't know who he is, Zilla Fatu is the son of the late Umaga. That's right. Umaga is it, <coughs> As you know Zilla Fatu is the son of of Umaga and of course relatives to the members of the bloodline now recently uh, there was a thing a few months back where he's no longer part of reality of wrestling now they never gave a specifics what was going on I'm sure one day we will find out but it's not today now for our final update in the promotion section 
uh, Wrestling Revolve for the What Us show it has, reve- has shown revealed that Brian Keith will be involved, and this will be in the uh, 17th of February for this year in Texas. So, as you know, the Bounty Hunters from there, so we're going to see Keith, Brian Keith there. <coughs> now, we move on with what we like to call is the Mustafa Ali watch. Now, as you know, recently I did put out an update on Mustafa Ali's matches for 2024. More places have been added for that. So, let's see what we have. First is, this is now, this one, I never heard of this promotion, but this one is coming all the way to France. That's right. There is a French promotion called APC Catch. Um, they announced that on January 6th, Mustafa Ali will be challenging Aiglel Blanc. Well, I can't pronounce the first name, but I can't pronounce the last name Blanc. So it <coughs> will happen in France. So yeah, now this is why I do this, because you never heard of this promotion. I never heard of it, but I'm going to do some research. Next up, in <coughs> a month later, he will be in the UK for Ref Pro High Sticks 2024 on the 17th of February, taking on Robbie X. Now I know that match is going to be killer, so we will expect that as well. And then finally, he makes his way in in April back to Chicago for freelance wrestling. Now they haven't announced the name of the of the show yet, or <coughs> any opponent. So once I do, you guys will be the first to know, or so to speak. Now moving on with certain developments that have been going on. Um, you may have heard about this. Katsuyori Shibata is all elite. Now this is a very interesting thing. Last time we heard, Shibata had to drop the the ROH Pure title not too long ago. However, he went back to Japan and never explained what was going on. Well, it looks like it's, he's coming back. He wants to finish off his career with AEW. Um, I'm not sure if he is no longer with New Japan as part of their, as their teachers in the, in the LA Dojo. I don't know. We'll see about that. Um, Fightful, um, Fightful Select reports that um, AEW's vice president of live events and touring named Rafael um, Morphy is finishing up with the company. So basically, he will be leaving soon. Uh, big congratulations to Cass Lee, formerly known as Peyton Royce, and her husband, Sean Spears, also known as um, Tyne Dillinger, announcing that they are expecting a second child. Yes, so... That was announced, uh, but they're hoping that this time it will. Hoping this time it will be a boy. They, well, they already have a son, but looks like they're they want to have boys in the family instead. Uh, recently, as you know, I talked about the NDAs. Now, if you guys don't know, what that means the non disclosure agreement. Basically, you can't talk about that whatsoever because you signed it. However, uh, Jericho went on a bit of a you know, <coughs> dramatic fight with CM Punk's attorney named Stephen New, talking about this. Now, Stephen New has been revealing that the reason that, uh, that the reason no one is talking about that is because they signed a- an NDA. And he, Jericho kind of, well, not offensive, but felt like he shouldn't be talking about this whatsoever. Uh, this is what he had to say. Well, Stephen New said this. It's your empl- in, It's in the employee handbook unless you have special one. Can we figure it out? And Jericho goes, Hey, Steven New, I don't adhere to an employee handbook and never had one in four years working for AW. have never signed an NDA in my life, ever. So stop trying to be a bully, making egological fantasy brags for your clients and start doing some research. So basically, he's talking about this. So even Jericho, who was not present there, he said he never done this. So this is going to be not ugly, but yes. Now, Ric Flair recently talked to uh, rest, the Wrestling Classic, and this is what he had to say. My health is fine. I have passed the medical degree. I can't get in the ring, but I'm not going to fight. Let's make that clear. 
Now, many people have recently been commenting about Ric Flair being AEW. Oh, he's going to wrestle, all that. But he's saying, look, I'm medically clear, but I'm not going to fight. I'm just going to get in the ring, do my thing. So it, that's what he's saying. That's why we have WWE loyalists who are crapping in their pants, acting like they think, it's unfair, he's an AEW. Get the story straight before you make it into assumptions or, or logical conclusions that you think that fits the narrative. That's the problem I have. That's why I think WWE loyalists are a bunch of Oscar Mayer wieners. Now, uh, as you all know, on January 2nd, Kota Ibushi will be having a dream match, and his match will be in the main event in Pro Wrestling Noah on January 2nd. However, Noah has revealed that uh, Kota Ibushi will miss the, tw the December 27th press conference due to the fact that he's currently here in the U.S. Now, someone actually, but this is what they said. Is this a possibility that he could be partnering up with Jericho on World's End? That is something that could be a possibility. Jericho did state it <coughs> that they did sign the contract. So he could team up with Kota Ibushi. That could be the logical thing that's going on. But we will see. Now, um, as you know, Tam Nakano has recently won the Yoshi MVP award from Tokyo Sports. Uh, it's later revealed that she will be part at the uh, to December 29th Real Goku show accepting this award. So this is her way of, I believe, trying to pay back for all pay back to all the fans who have supported her throughout the years. And I think this is a good way. Now, our last update here, as you know, I want to how to say correct myself on a, something that came around. Now, as you know, there's been talk about. An NXT star making his way to New J to Japan to participate in an All Japan show on January 3rd. And people are now... The name that they said that was going to be participating is Drew Gulak. Well, apparently that was not the case. So someone <coughs> either was playing games or not giving the right information. Uh, later it was announced by Willem Regal that is his son who is going to All Japan. We're talking about Charlie Dempsey. Now, I don't want to make this longer, but I will make a, uh, a discussion video about this. I don't know if this is the right choice to have Charlie Dempsey to go to All Japan. Not, nothing against him, but I feel like it would have been a much bigger name with someone else. And I think some of you would agree with that. So we'll see what happens from here on out. And I think that's pretty much it what we have. So let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Hope everybody's having a great Christmas. So by the time this video is out, Christmas should be already over. But um, for our next episode, as you know, is Tuesday Wrestling. So we may have M NWA Power if there's any. And of course, NXT if there's any NXT. If not, then I'll just... Wing it for all of you. Just surprise you. That sort of thing. But we will see what happens. So let's just <coughs> cross our fingers and hope to die. <laughs> well, not die, but hope for the best. So I think that's pretty much it. So I will see you guys on the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.